Come on, we praise the Lord, everybody. Can we praise the Lord, everybody? Clap your hands to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, to the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Praise God, praise God. I, there is an old chorus that says, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. You know, we have some things that we are about to do for the kingdom of the living God. And there are some enemies, some enemies from the pit of hell that will try to stop the move of God. But I feel like declaring this morning, let God arise and every enemy be scattered. Nothing can stop the move of the living God. Oh, can we praise the Lord? Can we praise the Lord? Can we lift Jesus higher? Can we glorify him? Let me ask the church to stand. Let me ask everybody to stand. Clap your hands to the king, the conquering lion, the victor. Oh, the one that gives us the victory again and again and again and again. Oh, praise the Lord. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God bless you god bless you you may be seated we serve the victorious one always watching over us when the enemy tries to raise his head jesus knows how to take care of him oh can we praise the lord can we praise the lord everybody glory to god we just want us to know some time ago we had mentioned that we were going to take over some of these parks across town. Mandela Park in Half a Tree and Emancipation Park in New Kingston and then George William Grant Park downtown. And we were going to just turn up and declare this gospel. Preach and whoever we wills will just hear and will just come and will just get saved because of the Holy Ghost. And uh, right now, I'd like us to understand that comes the 30th of May. We are going to start with these services. Amen. We, we had sent down to the KSAC and to the other approving authorities. And we now have the approval. And we can then pick up our equipment, pick up everything, have the Holy Ghost to guide and wash and keep and lift and head on down. And so we ask for youth president that on the Friday the 30th, we will have youth service, but not here. We, on Friday the 30th, Brother Richards, we are going to have youth service. And we are going to have it at Mandela Park in Halfway Tree. 
Amen. Saints of the Most High God, we are going to ask, this is not a youth event only. They are involved. But this is a men's group, a ladies auxiliary, a missions. It's a church event. And we want every member of this church. I don't know if the spot in Mandela Park is going to hold us. If it can't, well, some of us will have to just spread out. But that's all right. But we need every saint to make a very special effort to be there. So that comes Friday, the 30th of May. We, we get there at 6.30 to begin at 6.45, and all roads lead to Mandela Park. Is that all right? You think any force from hell can stop us? You think rain can stop us? If no, sun, no, no moon don't come out that night, and the moon is red that night, unless the rapture comes, we are going to be out at Mandela Park, the 30th of May, Friday, and we gather there at 6.30, with a strong show of force to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ and tell men that it is time to be saved. Come on, we put our hands together and glorify God for what he's going to be doing comes that night. Then two weeks after that, June the, thir the 13th, Friday the 13th. Now, in the world... Don't tell anybody about Friday the 13th. But in the church, tell me about it. Because that day, we are going downtown. I hear say that there's a whole heap of gunshot down there. Those that are weak in heart, don't come. Those that are fearful for what is happening downtown, don't come. But I don't think there should be any trembling saints in the house of God. But Friday the 13th at 6.30, we are going to be in the heart of downtown Kingston in George William Grant Park. Over one side is Matches Lane. Over another side is Mark Lane and Luke Lane. And over, as you go beyond, not far from there is the market where they just burned down. And beyond there is Tivoli Gardens and some dangerous places. But in, even though those are some dangerous men, they need salvation. They need to hear that there is a God who loves them. And if we don't go, how will they hear? So I want the saints to be prepared and I want us to keep Friday the 13th of June in mind. Because we are going to go down to George William Grant Park. And we are going to declare this gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, can we praise the Lord? On the 27th, we would be going to Emancipation Park. But we will put that on hold, Deacon Parker. Because on that day, Friday the 27th, bear it in mind, saints, there is going to be one of the biggest choirs in praise that Faith Chapel has ever seen. That is when they are going to manifest themselves. That is when the others who come is going to come to manifest. They call it Manifest 2014. But it's going to be the biggest choir event. We're the choir here at Faith Chapel. And some groups here from Faith Chapel. I understand a choir from Manchester. There are some groups from around the apostolic circles that we know. And we are going to converge right here in Faith Chapel for a great event on the 27th of June, 2014. And it is going to be a great, great time of worship and praise. We ask every saint to mark this date. It's going to be a great time of rejoicing and worship and thanksgiving to Almighty God. And so all road leads here at 6 o'clock. And we ask you to make note of it. And there is going to be a special offering that night. I understand that there is going to be just the regular things for sale. But everything from out of that event is going to be going towards what we are doing over and about to do in Africa. Oh, can we praise the Lord? Can we praise the Lord? Amen. And then afterwards, two or so weeks after that, we then go to Emancipation Park. But you will get the date um, in a while. We ask us to pray. Now, in, in preparation for this, 
and for what is coming in Kenya, I'm going to ask all the saints to prepare for a very special saints meeting. Not this Wednesday, but the other Wednesday. A very special saints meeting. We are going to be rolling out some things. We are going to be showing us some things. We are going to be arranging to get into a time of fasting and prayer and preparation. We want chain fasting too after a while, then chain prayer for every day of the two weeks that we will be in Kenya. We got, we're going to need to have folks praying and the prayer must not cease. The prayer must not stop. And so we are going to put some responsibility on some saints. And we are going to depend on you. If you don't pray when you're supposed to pray, there's going to be a break in the link, in the chain. And that must not happen. I would like for us, not this Wednesday, but the other Wednesday, a very special saints meeting. And we are going to look at the entire preparatory effort in terms of prayer and fasting and we are getting into the details and we ask us to come there will be two all night prayer meetings in that time the 6th of june bear it in mind the 25th of july bear it in mind but then when we come again next week wednesday we will hear more about that and all the other plans to get this thing together is that all right saints of god are we ready for a seven day and seven night for those who can do it? Because we are going to do it. And we are going to be praying and we are going to be seeking God and we are going to be covering those who are going and we are going to be achieving great things by the Lord. And so we ask us to prepare ourselves for what is about to happen. And finally, at the end of the month, the end of May, the last Sunday in May, what is it that we are going to have that day? Of a time of thanksgiving and worship and praise and then remember now all the saints we were asked to make a very special pledge remember saints you remember the pledge amen a very special pledge and that Sunday morning the last Sunday in May we ask that we put it together we are gonna march and we are gonna give it and we are gonna lift our faith and we are going to trust God to multiply it a hundredfold so that we can accomplish all that we have set in our hearts to do over in a foreign land. Can we praise the Lord? So bear it in mind, make a very special sacrifice and give as best as you can. And we will march waving our sheaves and put them as a first fruit offering, a, a very special offering the kingdom business. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Let's continue to worship him. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we clap our hands unto the Lord and give him thanks? For indeed, God is a good God. We're going to be having some young men who will be coming to give a tribute to our mothers. Can they come right now? And I'm asking... All the mothers in the house to stand. All the mothers. Please stand. Let our young men come. That will be doing the tribute to our mothers. Just mothers I want to see stand. Praise God. Sister Judy, where are the men? God, we, we just have a note here. We just have a note here that, oh, our men are here. Great. 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 These are the deacons and pastor of tomorrow. All the deacons and pastor of tomorrow. And future bishops too. Husbands and fathers. A toast to mothers. We gather in this 
this fashion every Mother's Day. Not because we have nothing else to do, but something important. Not because we have something else important to do, but because we have something important to say. Our expression of appreciation must be recorded. Because, because without our mothers, we would have been voided. Mothers have a special place and a special touch. They shape, inspire, and mold us. You see, a mother knows what a real man ought to be. And in raising boys, she has a clear strategy. Consider the mother of Moses. She sent her son down the river to where she knew Pharaoh's daughter would be. Hannah also had a plan. She praised God, give me a babe and grow him up to be a man. He laid in his little cot that starry night and could not help. But answer, Lord, I will arise. And so Samuel was a mighty prophet, not in small part, because of the prayers his mother prayed. And it so and so it continues even today, where mothers everywhere show us how to care. Let us arise and say thank you. Arise and say God bless you. Arise and take up the mantle. The next generation is depending on you. Happy Mother's Day to you. Praise God. Give our, give our men a hand. Give them a clap. As you remember, some time ago I tell you that we don't have boys, we have men. No boy. We all have men. We were born a man. So that's why we don't act like man, because acting is foolishness. We are a man. We don't know to do nothing else but just being a man. Okay? So we don't hack like man. We are men. Praise God. I just got a note here. I'm going to be asking the entire congregation to stand. And I'm going to be asking Pastor Wong to just lead us. We just have a note here that Sister Kimon Hallin, the wife of Brother O'Neill Hallin, is very sick. And she is asking for prayer. I believe she probably is in the hospital because... They were there yesterday at the doctor when, we, when I spoke to them, and now we get this note as she is very sick. So we are asking the church to pray right now, and we are asking Pastor Wang to just... Could you all bow our heads? Let us all call out to Jesus right now. Heavenly Father, we humble our hearts and our soul before thee, O God. We bring before you our sister right now, O God been afflicted at this moment, oh God. God, the doctors may not know what the situation is or what the circumstances are, but thou knowest, Lord Jesus. As our balm in Gilead, oh God, we come to thee, oh God. Our great physician, we pray that you may extend your hand, oh God. And from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, oh God, we pray that your anxion may be upon her, O oh God, to bring her, Lord Jesus, to that place of health, Lord Jesus, we pray. God, bring the victory, Lord Jesus, that we have a testimony, O oh God, of your greatness and your miracle that you have wrought in her life, O oh God. Strengthen her husband, Lord Jesus, at this time, O oh God. Bring comfort and consolation, Lord. Have it your way, we ask all these or more, Lord Jesus, in your great and holy name, Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, we ask it. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. One more time, in Jesus' name. Praise God, praise God. Could you be seated for me, please? I'm going to be asking the wife the wives of all our deacons to make their way up right now, right here. Right now, please, wife of all our deacons, just stand up and come to the front right now. Please. Please. Right now. I'm going to ask in all the deacons who are here to stand up and go to your wife. 
If your wife is not here, still stand and go there. We are going to give you something to accept for her. She's your other half. Come on, deacon. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, deacon. Praise God. Deacons, move it right away. Praise God. Bring down those stuff, brother Chris. Gentlemen, move fast. We are men and we don't hack. We are men. We move. Praise God. We are having all our um, deacons make a presentation to their wives. On behalf of Mother's Day, all our deacons have their... Okay. Yes, and we are going to ask you, sir, if all of you have received... All deacon have received. Come, gentlemen, let's go, my brothers. Come, brother Panton. Praise God. Make the presentation to your wife, please, deacons. And if your wife is not here, hold it with both hands. <laughs> praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, put your hands together for our deacons. Praise God, praise God. Okay. All right, I'm, is, is there any mothers here that is between the age of 75 to 95? Can I ask you to stand? Brother Chris, mothers between the age of 75 to 95. Whoa, we are, whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, sis, you're, you're at the back there. You, you're over 75. Oh my God. Woo. You are looking beautiful, madam. 77. Praise God. We're going to be pinning on some lovely cassage on them. Praise God. And, and is, there, is there any mother in the house that have 15 children? Well, no, I laugh. My grandmother has 15. Is there any with 14? My mother has 14. One. <laughs> yeah, that's a woman of children, man. You have been one and two, eh? 14, 15, 16. <laughs> Praise God. You have done us well. <laughs> and she have how much? 14. Huh? We don't worry about after them all alive. As long as you give birth 14 times, or the amount of kids come out is the number 14. That's great, man. That's that. Get something for her. Yes, she's in the blue. 14. Yes. That's wonderful. Show these young ladies how to have babies, eh? <laughs> You're having three kids and talk about your stuff. <laughs> you know, when I get married, I ask my wife that I, I'm not going to stop until I reach in the double digit. And she said, well, you ain't going to reach in the double digit. We still not start yet. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Give her a, give a, a clap offerings. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Okay. All right, now we have some other tokens. And uh, we're going to be asking the mothers who have not gotten in, uh, who, um, the rest of mothers to just stand. The rest of mothers to stand. Okay, we have some young men. Um, you... Who is organized? Yeah, some of them are on the back. Okay. 
Those who are at the back there, begin to give out from around the back and come on up to the front, okay? Some of you, you are here at the front, begin to give out, and some of you go this way. My brother, go that way. And just begin to, to give out to the mothers. Just give them up. Come this side, son. Come this side. My brother. As you receive, you can be seated. Just, just give out as you go along. Don't pass anybody that is standing. You just give out and they're seated and then they come back. After you get it, you sit. Brother Chris. Praise God. Also, we are going to be asking, uh, while they are doing that, while the, the men are doing that, I'm going to be asking, it seems like none of our pastor's wives are here today. Is Sister Daly here? She's inside? No, uh, we know Sister Wang is not here, and we know Sister Grizzly is not here. So we are going to be asking um, Sister Marsha Small to, to, to come. She's going to receive this on behalf of um, Sister Grizzle. And we're going to be asking um, Brother Lennox Brown to come and present it to her for us. Bless the Lord, everybody. I feel uh, such great honor to stand here and to be presenting this to Sister Marsha on behalf of uh, Sister Grizzle. I just want to say that the Bible says in Proverbs that how every wise woman buildeth her house. And that speaks to Sister Grizzle's work throughout the years. It speaks to what she has done. And I am today standing saying that it's not only three children that Sister Grizzle has, but it's a lot of us. You know, we stand here and everyone can say that we, in some way or form, we have been uh, touched by Sister Grizzle. I remember in getting married, Sister Grizzle sat me down and said, Lennox, this is what you need to look for. This is what you need to look for. I said, Sister Grizzle, tell me. Preach on, Sister Grizzle. <laughs> Sister Grizzle said, she must be your friend. So I, 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 I draw out my little checkbook and I take it off and say, yes, she's my friend. She must be a mother. And I hear Brother Grizzle in the background saying, that's right, that's right. And, you know, I just want to say that Sister Grizzle, she is so much more than, you know, our pastor's wife. She's truly a friend. She's the only woman I know how to, 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 to blend in with the young people and to have a conversation with them. And then when she's ready, she, f she steps right back into um, being a minister's wife. And I just want to present this. Tell mommy that I love her. Tell mommy that we the church, Faith Chapel, cares for her deeply. Tell her thanks for the encouragement. Tell her thanks for, for the, the care that she has shown. And tell her that we will, we will show our appreciation in every way possible. We love her, we love her, we love her. Praise God, praise God. We're going to be asking Sister Darlington to come and present to Pastor Wong on behalf of his wife. Could you stand, Pastor Wong? He's Pastor and Sister Wong, he's standing. If you look carefully, you may see her. Praise the Lord, everyone. The Wong, on behalf of all the membership of the chapel, we, I'm sorry that Sister Wong is not here. Personally, I am. I would just like to see her knees knocking up here. But she's not here. So, sir, we'd like to have you to 
Brother Macho Stick say, take it with your two hands for her until we see her personally. God bless you. Praise God. Praise God. Um, Pastor Daly is going to receive it on behalf of his wife. And I'm going to ask his daughter, Joel, to come and make the presentation. Can you stand, Pastor and Sister Daly? And here you see Sister Wong a while ago. <laughs> So I would have just collected on her behalf. But. Okay. Mommy. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day from the family of Faith Chapel. In your absence, I know you know I love you. We all love you. And I've been told that our mannerisms are similar. So this is Mommy Collect. Thank you so much. God bless. Praise the Lord, everybody. I... It's, I must apologize for the mothers who did not receive anything. I am really sorry and I'm really hurt. I take full responsibility for that. Right? But I can guarantee you one thing. If the Lord tarries next year, there will not be a mother here that does not receive an appropriate gift. You can hold Devon Fitzgerald Mattox to that. That's my word. I give it and I'll stand by it. And I'm truly and sorry, especially for the visiting mothers who have not received anything. We had some late starting in what we were doing and we gross underestimate what you're serious then bring them come and <laughs> that's the owner left them around there we have a seven or eight I don't know why they get lost visiting mothers we're gonna ask any visiting mothers that didn't get anything to stand is for seven or eight come look at them sis turn your head this way and look right make sure you give to them okay praise God and uh, we are going to collect our offering I did not forget I'm gonna be asking the hushes to come and um, I'm gonna ask any man in church today that have more than five thousand dollars in your pocket or up to five thousand dollars in your pocket take out that money and only leave yourself with one thousand and put it in the offering plate any man if you have more than five thousand dollars in your pocket take it out Leave yourself with $1,000 and put it in the offering plate. So hard because you have money for buy the gas, money for get the children to go to school tomorrow morning. It's so hard, don't it? But I know that all of you here as a man boast about how good God is. And I'm challenging you. Go into your wallet, man. If you have 2,000, take out, leave one. I ain't see no man going in their pockets. Go in your wallet, man. And take it out. I'm not asking you to do anything that I'm not prepared to do. And take it out. We are in a financial crisis. And I realize that we cannot borrow our way out of it. We cannot work our way out of it. So we have to invest our way out of it. And the best place to invest it 
is in God. Eh? Ladies, you can do likewise if you are led. Let's bow our head. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks. We give you praise. Bless, Lord Jesus God, your people. We are here today lifting our feet to you, God. As you are the way maker, you are the provider. And Lord God, you are the one that can furnish a table in the wilderness. Bless every hands, bless every heart. In the name of Jesus, bless it that it will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Praise God. We are going to be asking the tenors in praise to come. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. I want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in the house. Achieve it to the mothers. Never would have made it. Never could have made it without you. I would have lost it all. But now I see you were there for me. Never would have made it. Never could have made it without you. I would have lost it all. But now I see you were there for me. Never would have made it, no, never could have made it without you, I would have lost it all, but now I see you were there for me, I'm stronger, I'm wiser, I'm better.
every good thing I have done, everything that I've become, everything that's turned out right, it's because you're in my life. And if I ever teach a child the way, Because you're in my life And if I ever teach a child the way Ever learn myself to change Ever become who I want to be It's not the I but the you in me It's not the I but the you in me It's not the I but the you in me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Give them a clap. Give them a clap. Give them a clap. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We have some great talent in this place. Great talent, and I believe they should be doing things that the world should hear. I truly believe that. And at this time, I'm going to be asking Brother Carlton McGregor to come. And the choir is going to be ministering for us this morning, decked in a beautiful array of colors of the Tanzania flag, the, 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 the flag of the country, Tanzania. Come, Minister McGregor. Come and uh, let the choir minister to the glory of God. And shall we praise God, everybody? Shall we praise God one more time? Come on, lift your hands. Give God a wave offering this morning. God has been so good to us. He has been so faithful. He's a wonderful, worthy God, worthy of our praise and honor. Glory, we worship your name this morning, Jesus. Be magnified in this house, great God, and have your way. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Somebody say, bless Brother Carton. Brother Carton gave me a very challenging job this morning. But if you will, I want you to stand with us. And by faith, in Jesus' name, we're going to minister this song. The song says, shout for joy. Stand, man. Stand, 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 stand. Don't wait on anybody. In victory, O Zion. Tanzania. Uganda. Kenya. Grant William Park, Emancipation Park, Mandela Park, Jamaica, we're taking it in Jesus' name. Amen, everybody. We have the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Come on and put your hands together. Song says, shout for joy and victory, O Zion. We are the brink of a great work, a great move of Almighty God. And before we go, we have the victory. Do you believe it? Man, let me hear you. Shout for joy in victory, O Zion. Shout for joy in victory, O Zion. Shout for joy. Shout for All the men, let me hear you. In victory, O Zion. Shout for joy. Jesus 
says half a three is that way. I want everybody to turn this direction. And we're gonna sing it this time. The devil is under my feet and Jesus reigns. Claiming half a tree and every soul will hear the word of God. Everybody turn to that direction. Hallelujah. If you don't believe it, don't do it. You need to be with one accord. If you want to stretch your hands, both hands, your face, your eyes, we're going to pray in the spirit. Praise God. Come on, everybody. The devil is on the map. The devil is on the map. Downtown Kingston, reclaiming every life, every soul, every marriage, every child, everyone who will hear the word of Almighty God. Stretch your hands one more time in the spirit. Claim those lives for Jesus. Ready? Two, one, two, the devil, the devil is under my Reclaiming those souls for Jesus. Almighty God, point to that sign right up there. The entire world for Jesus Christ. And this time, as you point, as you pray in the spirit, as you sing in worship, I want you to march. Come on, Joba, give me a march and beat. Boom, boom, da na na, ah, ah. We're going there in Jesus' name, the entire world. The devil is, the devil is under my Everybody march. Right, left, right, the devil is under my feet. Where is the devil? Where is the devil? Sing. The devil is under my feet. We're taking the world for Jesus. The devil. The devil is under my feet. But Jesus reigns. Jesus. Jesus reigns. All things are possible through Jesus. Subject to him. Jesus, 
You maybe can't see the flag, but the chains can I lift it up? Lift up that flag, Tanzania. That's it, that's the country, Tanzania. And the flag is right here. Point your hands to it. Right here, everybody. We want all of Faith Chapel, all the world, to see this. We're going there in Jesus' name. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Come on. Ready? One, two, three, the other. The devil is under March. Left, right, left. The devil is under We're going there in Jesus' name. God. Can we clap our hands unto the Lord? Praise God. Jesus reigns forever and forever. Praise God. In the way of announcement, I want to announce that there will be no service here tonight. So all the husband can take out your wife this evening for Mother's Day. And all the children can take out your mothers for Mother's Day. Even if it's to just go and eat an ice cream or something, something. You know? We're giving you the rest of the evening. You know, one of the things I tell our pastors is that they are very concerned about the family unity. Uh, Minister King is coming in a while to bring forth the word. But I just want to say one thing. I heard a lot of people always testify and say, that if my wife don't want to come... It won't hinder me. I'm not going to heaven without my wife. I ain't going to heaven without my wife. And I'm going. Because heaven is still in the family business. So when I go to heaven by myself and leave my wife down here, who am I going to walk with to look for everybody else? Deacon Parker not going to accommodate me when he want to talk to his wife. Heaven is still in the family business. I ain't going nowhere without her. And we as men have to remember that we are the watchmen for the souls of our wives and our family. And so, what you can do to assure that you won't go to heaven without her, going to covenant with God for your family. That even if you're dead before them, the covenant that you make with God guaranteed your space in heaven. Could we all stand? I said that a couple of years ago, and I'm still saying it. I ain't leaving my wife down here for no devil. She's coming with me. If, I'm going, if heaven is so beautiful, why it won't bother me if she don't want to come? That is silly. That's why we have so much breakup in our marriage, because we ignore our spouses and talk stupid things. And, you know, if my children don't want to come, you have your children. Oh, you must not want them to come to heaven. And, and the, the devil people them them pick the doing the devil thing for make sure they go to hell. They might guarantee them children are space in hell. First class, please. 
And we ain't guaranteeing our people in heaven. Could we stand and lift our hands together? And I'm going to ask Minister King right now to come. I must tell you, for me, he is Pastor King. For me, he is Pastor King. Pastor Garfield King. I tell him it a couple of months ago, a couple of years ago, and he smiled when I say to him, but he is Pastor King. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's all in church. Amen. Bless God. You know, I'm, I'm just happy to be in church. Got an opportunity to get in some of the aerobics, you know. Good. Amen. God bless. All in church. Amen. By the way, tenors in praise. You want a fourth tenor? Because I... Uh, The devil is under my feet. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless God. But let us just lift our hands and let's just love him. He's the reason why we live. He's the reason why we're here. Hallelujah. There is none like Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it's Mother's Day, but if we can just focus on God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you, mom, but God is better than any mother. Hallelujah. When your mother and your father forsake you, hallelujah, Jesus will never forsake you. Amen. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised. Bless God. Pastor Wong, can you pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this gathering, O oh God. It comes time, Lord Jesus, for us to hear from you. We pray that you anoint your servant, that he be a living oracle, Lord Jesus. That when you speak through him, Lord Jesus, we may be recipients of your word. Grant us receptive hearts, Lord Jesus. Grant him apostolic authority, Lord Jesus, to declare your word, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, for prophetic utterance, Lord Jesus. God, let us know that we are in the presence of the living God right now. Have it your way, not our will, but thy will be done in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name Amen. God bless you can you turn with me to book of Ezra chapter 7 that's Ezra chapter 7 and I'm going to be reading a few verses amen hallelujah your word is Jesus Ezra chapter 7, hallelujah, and verse 6 says, This Ezra went up from Babylon, and he was already, he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given and the king granted him all his request according to the hand of the Lord, his God, upon him. Say, Lord, put your hand upon me. Verse 9, for upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem according to the good hand of his God upon him. Lord, put your hand upon me. And this is why God's hand was upon Ezra. It says, For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel the statutes and judgments. And I skip down to verse 21. It says, and I, even I, and because the hand of, of God was upon Ezra, these are some of the results. It says, and I, even I, Artaxerxes, the king, do make a decree to all the treasurers which are beyond the river. And whatsoever Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of God of heaven, shall require of you, be it done speedily. Unto one hundred talents of silver, and to one hundred measures of wheat, and to one hundred baths of wine, and to one hundred 
baths of oil and salt without prescribing how much. Whatsoever is commanded by the God of heaven, let it be diligently done for the house of the God of heaven. For why should there be wrath against the realm of the king and his sons? Also we certify you that touching any of the priests and Levites, singers, porters, netinims, and the, our ministers of this house of God, it shall not be lawful to impose toll, tribute, or custom upon them. And thou, Ezra, after the wisdom of thy God that is in thine hand, set magistrates and judges which may judge all the people and are beyond the river, all such that know the laws of God, and teach ye them that know them not. And whosoever will not do the law of thy God and the law of the king, let judgment be executed speedily upon him, whether it be unto death or to banishment or to confiscation of goods or to imprisonment. Blessed be the God of our fathers, which hath put such a thing as this in the king's heart to beautify the house of the Lord which is in Jerusalem and hath extended mercy unto me before the king and his counselors before all the king's mighty princes and I was strengthened as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me and I gathered together out of Israel chief men to go up with me bless God you may be seated Amen. And so, we all, or probably most of us, know the story of Ezra. We know that there was a time that Israel, because of their disobedience to God, God allowed them to be carried captive. And... The kingdom was split. The kingdom of Israel, the ten tribes, were taken by the, Assyr the Assyrians initially. And then the Babylonians came and they took Judah. And they were several years in captivity. But there came a time when the world power had changed from the Babylonians to the Medes and Persians. And the Bible said that God put in the heart of Cyrus to send back the children of Israel to their land that God had given them and to have the temple rebuilt. And he sent back the artifacts that belong to the temple of God. And so it is that as the people regathered in Jerusalem, and they began to worship God as they used to in olden days. They began to sacrifice as God commanded them to. They began to keep the Sabbaths as God commanded them to. And to keep the law. And so they wanted now to rebuild the temple of God. And when they were about to rebuild the temple of God. Some of the enemies of God recognize what was about to be done and i want you to understand that whenever you are going to whenever you have positioned yourself and made up in your mind and prepared your heart to see god and to do according to the commands and the word of god the enemy is going to try to block you the enemy is going to try to block you through people in your community he's going to try to block you through people on your job He's going to try to block you through even your very family members. And sadly, even some people in the church he will use to try and block you. And so they were about rebuilding the temple. And the enemies of God sent to Zerubbabel, who was the leader, and Jeshua. And they said... We see that you're about to rebuild the temple of God. Come, let us join with you and build the temple together. But Zerubbabel was a man of discernment. And so he said, look here, you have not lost our part in this. We will build the temple of God ourselves. Let me tell you something. If the kingdom of God is going to be built, it's you and I, we have to build it. 
We can't look to the prime minister. We can't look to the rich and the famous. We can't look to the businessmen. We can't look to the heathen. What is needed to build the temple of God resides in the house of God. When they were building the tabernacle, the people said, Hallelujah, Moses sent out and said the people are to carry. And just among the people of God alone, they didn't go out and beg. But among the people, enough came in to build the temple of, to build the tabernacle and to build all the vessels. And there was more, so much so that the men building Bezalel and Ahilahab, they said to Moses, we have too much. Tell the people to stop giving. You think that you're poor? And I didn't plan to say this, but if we're going to Kenya, amen, all the resources lie right here. We don't need to go to the heathen, brother Nathan. All the resources lie right here. To do the will of God. And so, there is something, and, and you know, I, I'm going off from the script, but God is leading me this way. So when the, the heathen, the enemies of God, offered to help, and Zerubbabel said, no way. You have no part in this. I want you to understand. Be careful who you take help from. As saints of God, when you're in problems, don't go to any and anybody. It's not any and any man because they are rich. You must go to them and ask them. But you must go to God and allow God to lead you. Because the plan of the enemy is to infiltrate the church and to destroy it from within. Be careful of the unholy alliances. I see some apostolic people and they're aligning themselves. Hallelujah. With people that are not saved. With people that are not baptized and filled. I see apostolic people. Amen. I, I'm looking forward. Amen. Bless God to, the, to, the, to, to that great, uh, hallelujah, manifest. Because I know that I will not see some people of a certain ilk here. And I'm not being prejudiced. But God is looking for those to worship him. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, this is not what I plan to come and say. But can I? Because I see apostolics having, having, having events. And I say, God, God, there. And, and, and um, what's, the, what's the other one? Prodigal son and, and all those people. Men that need, Papa son, men that need to know the truth of God. Men that need to be baptized in Jesus' name and to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And we are carrying them to minister to our congregation. But Zerubbabel said, no way. Not under my watch. Not in the church of the living God. I feel Jesus and I feel, I feel radical for God today. You see, all that we need to do the work of God lies within us, saints of God. And all we need is the hand of God to be upon us. We don't need Butch Stewart's bank book. We don't need the prime minister's influence. We don't need, hallelujah, the politician's contacts. We just need the hand of God to be upon us. And so when Ezra went, hallelujah, bless God, he was bold to restart the building of the temple. Because guess what? The enemies of God, when they recognized that they could not stop the work, they began to frustrate. They sought counselors against the people of God. And they sought to frustrate Amen. Bless God. The work of God. And so the people of God stop building. They stop paying attention to the things of God. Because they were discouraged. Because the enemies of God were working against them. And the Bible said the enemies of God wrote to the king at the time. Artaxerxes and he said to the king. Look here, these Jews want to build Jerusalem again. And if you look in the history books, Jerusalem is a rebellious city. 
No king can rule over it. And if they rebuild the city, guess what, king? And here's the bottom line. They say, guess what, king? They will not give you tribute anymore. They will not pay custom anymore. And it's going to hurt the coffers of the king. Bottom line, it comes back to money. And when the king heard that, the king says, you know what? This can't work. And he issued an edict and said, the work must stop. This is the king. The most powerful person in the superpower of the day. He said that the work must stop. Can I tell you, saints of God? You know, the enemy always tried to use the finances to get at you. And he always stirs his any, your, the, the enemies of God by the finances to get at you. A sister was telling me that she works with a particular rich man who seems to be in the lodge. And since she has been at the house praying, the man said, look here, you're mashing up my business. And I'm going to kill you. But guess what? Guess what Ezra did? Ezra and the men that were there, they said, you know what? The king says that we should not build. But before that, some prophets came and prophesied to them. Because Agai and Zechariah came and said, look here, you are doing well, you are building your houses, you are prospering, but the, but, but the temple of God is left bare, and so you need to attend to the things of God. And so the prophets encourage the people of God. Hallelujah, we need the prophetic to encourage the people of God. I'm glad you're here, Pastor Wong. Because God showed me in a dream the prophetic through you, helping the people of God. Helping me, but helping the people of God. And I told him about it today. But I want to say to you, when the prophetic word was given, the men got strength. And they said, you know what? We are going to build the temple. The king says that we are to stop building, but guess what? We serve a bigger king. And when God send this prophetic word, I don't care what the powers of the day say. I don't care what the enemy say. Reality tells us that it's not uh, possible for us to go to Kenya. Reality tells us that we can't afford it. Reality tells us that we can't achieve it. Reality tells us, hallelujah, that with all that's happening in Africa, we are up against Goliath. But I remember David. Hallelujah. When David was up against Goliath, and he took up five stones and somebody said each stone represented the letters of the name Jesus because when we go in Jesus name who can stand before us and so the men were encouraged and they said you know what we're going to build the house of God I can't lock this because I'm not even preaching it we're going to build the house of God Regardless of what the king says, we're going to build the house of God. And then at the time, the people wrote a letter to the king at the time that was Darius. And they said, Darius, you know, Cyrus had some time ago decreed that the temple should be built. Hallelujah. And they made their request. Amen. And when they made their request, God troubled the heart of the king. And when the king looked through the records, he said, yes, Darius had decreed this. So he sent and said, guess what? The Jews are to build the temple and no one is to hinder them. And so Ezra boldly went to the king. And he said, king, we need to build and we need thus and such. And the king just wrote as we read and said, look here. To all the people in the province, whatever Ezra the priest requires, give it. Whatever you require, God can so organize it. Hallelujah. That those who has put it in their hearts, they'll have to give it. Because Ezra understood one principle. He know that the king had made his command today. But regardless of what the king says today, 
The Bible says in Proverbs that the heart of the king is in the hand of God. And as God directs the river, so he directs the heart of the king. And so when Ezra prayed going to the king, he had already consulted God. And as Ezra went before the king, he said, when the king gave him everything, Ezra said, all this happened because the hand of my God was upon me. And that's what I'm here to talk about. We need the hand of God upon us. The hand of God is upon this church. The hand of God is upon the mission to Kenya. The hand of God is upon your life. I don't care what the enemy has said. I'm here to say, who report? Will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. But can I tell you something about the hand of God? Because when the Bible talks about the hand of God, what does it really mean? The Bible says that God is a spirit. And it says that a spirit are not flesh and bones. So when we talk about the hand of God, we're not talking about a literal hand. Because God is spirit form. He does not have a physical form. Hallelujah, bless God. And so in theology, we use what is called anthropomorphisms. Meaning that we use human language and we ascribe human characteristics to God in order for us to understand God. Now what does this mean? Because my finite human mind cannot understand the eternal spirit of God. God will sometimes use language that I can understand to describe his attributes. But I want you to understand when the Bible uses human language to describe God, we are not to limit God. Because there's no way that we can fathom, we can perceive the power of God. Because he says, my ways are not your ways. And my thoughts are not your thoughts. And as high as the heaven is above the earth, so high is, so different is God from us. So guess what? The Bible said that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly. Above that we can ask or think. But nonetheless... To give us a glimpse of his glory. He uses this language. Amen. For us to kind of know the unknowable. And to perceive that which cannot be perceived. To fathom that which is unfathomable. Amen. Bless God. And so when the Bible talks about the hand of God. God was trying to convey a message. But what message was he trying to convey? You see, the hand is a very important part of the human body. So much so that we associate in our normal everyday language the hand with many things. And so we use language like he had a hand in it to mean that somebody was involved. If you want to submit an assignment, they say your hand in your assignment. If somebody stay far from something, they say they have a hands-off approach. Or if you're involved, they say he's quite hands-on. Amen. And so the Bible uses this idiomatic language about the hand, but it also speaks about the finger and the arm of God. I would take about five weeks to talk about the finger and the arm, but I'm going to stick to the hand of God today. Because the hand of God... Represents some things. The hand of God is likened or represents God's might, his power, and his majesty. So when Ezra said the hand of God was upon me, the power of God was upon him. Put your hand on my head, Lord, I don't mind. The hand of God speaks to divine favor. So it speaks to the fact that God is concerned and he gets personally involved. 
that he puts his own hand in the process amen bless God I don't care what situation you're going through if you can just get the hand of God to touch you if the hand of God can just come into your situation then a change is on the horizon because the hand of God represents the power of God and so the hand of God represents his deliverance because God said I brought the people out of Israel with a mighty hand put your hand upon me Jesus so God works signs and miracles and wonders hallelujah bless God and he subdued the enemies of God because his hand of God the hand of God was upon Israel I want you to understand when the Bible talks about the hand of God it is speaking about that divine favor amen that comes with God and that God is able to sustain thee hallelujah he bears you up in his hand amen Jesus said those that you have given me in my hands no man can pluck them out let me tell you something if you stay in the hand of God it's the safest place to be And this is such a wonderful subject, you know, I, I really feel like teaching because there are just so many things about the hand of God. Because the hand of God has five fingers and, and five in numerology is the number of grace. When the hand of God is upon you, it means that the grace of God is upon you. And so when Ezra said that the hand of God was upon me, he knew that the, the divine unmerited favor of God was upon his life. That even though he did not deserve it, the hand of God would carry him through. And so the hand of God, how the hand works, it grips and it grasps. And if you look at your joints, there are 15 joints on the fingers of your hands in all. Count them. Yes, I see some people counting them. There are 15 joints. And 15 is the number of covering. Because whatever the hand grasps, it covers. When the hand of God is upon you, I want to tell you that you are covered. The king might feel that he's powerful and the enemies of God feel they're going to destroy you. But when the hand of God is upon you, you're covered. Put your hand on me, Jesus. Hallelujah. But there's an amazing thing. Because in the Bible, there's a particular scripture in Isaiah 59. And I know that this is Mother's Day. And it says, bless God, that can a mother forget her child? Paraphrasing. God himself asked the question. God made the relationship between mother and child. He so created it that there would be that bond even from in the womb. That the child learned to recognize the mother's voice from in the womb. God connected them by that placenta. And there is a connection between mother and children. Fathers don't try to compete. Because it is a divine relationship. There is something when my wife had the first child. I had so much more respect for women. And what they have to go through. And they have to go through. Hallelujah. As they give birth. Amen. And through that period that they are pregnant. But despite the special relationship. Hallelujah. Between mother and child. God said can a mother forget her child. He says yes. This is possible. The very omniscient God. God said it is possible for a mother to abandon her child most mothers are good and most mothers won't do that but we see the cases where children are abandoned we see the cases where children are killed by their mothers and so your mother your very mother who you are closest to and probably the most loving and nurturing being in your life can forsake you but he said went on to say no but not I God said your mother will forsake you but I will not forsake you 
And God said, this is the token that I will not forsake you. He said, I've graven you in my hands. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that God has put you in his hands. He has put you in the place of power. He has put you in the place of divine protection. He has put you in the place of divine guidance. He has put you in the place of divine discipline. That's where the hand of God is. And so this is the same hands. He said, I've graven your image in my hands and because your image is in the hand of God God said that you must be saved and so the same hands that your image are in is the same hand that he stretched out on a cross and they drove the nail in that hand because your image was on his hand and so when Thomas said I need to see to believe Jesus said look at my hands look at the nail prints in my hand and I believe when Thomas looked at his hand he not only saw the nail print but he saw Garfield King he saw John Wong he saw Kazan Robinson he saw Barrington James because the same hands of God that brought your salvation is the same hands of God that can keep you and sustain you and so guess what it's not easy when you're going through a rough situation I feel Jesus in this place. No trial is enjoyable. And when we're going through, we never recognize the hand of God. It is sometime after your trial, when you look back and it says, hindsight is 2020 vision. Then is when you recognize where God was leading and guiding and covering you in the coverts of his hand. Hallelujah, bless God. And so guess what? Amen. When you're going through a trying situation, hallelujah, you don't recognize the hand of God that is working in your life. You don't recognize the hand of God that is paving your path. You don't recognize the hand of God that's working things out. Because trials are not enjoyable. But I want you to understand that it is these same hands, hallelujah, that were pierced for you. It is the same hand that covers you and keeps you in the time of your trial. And so guess what? Hallelujah. I'm here to tell somebody that the solution to your problem lies in the hand of God. It is an encouraging thing when you're in the hand of God because mighty works are done by the hands of God. The Bible said, Amen, bless God, that God said, my hands are created everything and the bible said that the heavens declare the glory of god and the firmament or the sky show it forth his handiwork the work of his hands and so guess what if you are in the hand of god no matter how impossible the situation seems if God created the universe with these hands, he can keep you with these hands. And so there was a time when Moses was in the desert. And the people of God murmured against Moses. They said, we want meat, we want flesh to eat. And already God had struck the rock and water came out. And God did all the miracles and Moses saw it. But when God said, Moses, I'm going to give them meat... Even Moses doubted the friend of God. And Moses said, God, really? Oh, you're going to get meat. And God said, look here. Are my hands short that they cannot save? I'm here to tell somebody that don't doubt the power, the saving power of God to deliver you. Because his hands are not short that he cannot save. And so God himself... He said, watch what I can do by my hands. And over two million people, God fed with flesh. He caused quails to come down and to feed them. I'm saying to you, saints of God, 
regardless of how impossible the situation may seem once you are in the hands of God once the hand of God is upon you the almighty the power of eternity is at your disposal if God will just keep us in his hands and so guess what I want to tell somebody that you need in your time of trial the hand of God to make you strong. It was the hand of God. The Bible said that Joseph's arms were in the hand of God. That's why he was able to navigate his brethren hating and killing him. That's why he was able to navigate Potiphar's house. And that's why he was able to navigate the prison. Because he was in the hand of God. And God's hand was upon him. But can I leave you with this? Because some of you here today, you are bitter. I sense it in my spirit. God laid it on my heart. There are some bitter people here. Some people came through the doors and you are angry or upset. Yes, you came to church. But you are bitter. You are bitter because you feel that you are hard done by. You are bitter because you feel like being a Christian, things not going as they should go. You are bitter because your family are dealing with you harshly. You are bitter because you feel like the leaders are not fair. You are bitter because you feel that the church brethren don't like you and are talking about you. You are bitter because you feel that your community hates you. And whatever it is, there are some bitter people here. But what you need today is the hand of God on your life. Because Ezekiel said, Ezekiel was bitter and Ezekiel said, so the spirit lifted me up and took me away and I went in bitterness. Ezekiel said I was bitter, but guess what? He said, in the heat of my spirit, come on F's. And there are some of you right here, you're heated in your spirit. You're angry in your spirit. You're upset in your spirit. You're disappointed in your spirit. In your spirit, you're backslidden. And you're just about walking away from this place. And you said, yeah, I'm not coming back. And you're saying that this thing of God is not working out. And yes, sometimes you may get bitter. But Ezekiel said, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. The hand of the Lord was strong upon me. If the hand of the Lord is strong upon you, then you can deal with the bitterness that attacks your heart. If the hand of the Lord is strong upon you, you'll be able to deal with the disappointments. If the hand of the Lord is strong upon you, you'll be able to deal with the spirit of discouragement. If the hand of the Lord is strong upon you, then when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of God is going to lift up a standard. And some of you are bitter because you have lost loved ones. And it seems as if they have gone too soon. But I'm here to tell you, just trust the hand of God. Like Jeremiah, seek the good of hand of God just to be upon you. And to direct your step, keep your hand upon me, Jesus. I want to tell somebody. That the hand of God can be upon you for good as it was for Ezra but the hand of God can be upon you for evil it is in your interest that the hand of God is upon you for good because the Bible said the very Israelites that he brought out with the mighty hand the scripture said that the hand of God was against the Egyptians when the hand of God is upon you, you don't have to worry about your enemy. You don't have to seek to fight your enemy. Because that hand of God that is upon you for good, it will be against your enemy for evil. Because when the enemy attacks you, and when the darts of Satan comes, the hand of God will be upon you. So those darts will go into the hand of God. God will cover and God will block you. I remember a few weeks ago when they did the skit. Amen. And the sister was here. And those who were ah, trying to mimic the weapons of the enemy. Amen. When Brother Mark stood and he mimicked the hands of God around the young lady. When the hand of God is upon you, then the attacks of the enemy will not reach you. 
But the hand of God needs to be upon you. And even though you are blessed, and even though you are called, and even though you are highly favored, if you are not obedient, the same hand of God that will bless you can turn against you and punish you. And so Samuel warned the children of Israel. He said, look here. Be sure that you obey the laws of God. Because if you do not obey the laws of God, then the hand of God will be against you. But guess what? I just realized that I said, guess what? And Brother Andrew pointed it out. So... Hallelujah. Man, just blow my vocabulary. And I was about to say, guess what again? But know this. If you come to God, even at these altars, and you ask God to put his hand of mercy upon you, you're in a good place. Because it is better to be in the hands of God than in the hands of man. Some put their trust in chariots and in horses. Some put their trust in the hands of men. Some put their trust in politicians and rich men. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. We will put our trust in the hand of our God. And so even when we sin, we'll put ourselves in the hand of God. Because David, when he made his error, and the prophet came to him and said, Look here, you have three choices. Ah, uh, Your enemies can pursue you for so and so a time. Or they can do thus and such to you. Or God can cause a plague to come upon you. David said, you know what? Put me in the hand of God because his mercies are great. Hallelujah. Don't trust the hand of men. Don't trust men to take you through your situation. I'm speaking to a mother who is alone. You have many children and you don't have any man to help. But don't trust a man to deliver you because he will impregnate you and leave you again. I'm saying put your trust in the hand of God because his mercies are great and God is able to sustain and to keep and to deliver. And so guess what? In the time of trial, sometimes we knowingly or unknowingly resist the hand of God. Have you ever resisted the hand of God? Sometimes we resist the hand of God. But the height I hear... The Peter, the apostle saying, God resisted the proud and gives grace to the humble. Then he says, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. That he may exalt you in due time. I'm here to tell somebody, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Job, when he was going through his situation, he said, the hand of God is upon me. But he said, though my flesh be destroyed, yet with my eyes I will see God. Though he slay me, yet I will trust him. Humble yourselves under the hand of God. Don't charge God foolishly with your mouth. Don't sin with your lips. But continue to worship and praise. And humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Because in due time, there is due time when you humble yourselves under God then something is due to you and in due time you will be exalted in due time you will be blessed in due time you will be lifted up hallelujah your word of Jesus I want somebody to understand hallelujah the Lord Jesus said, Hallelujah, in Isaiah 41 verse 10. He said, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. 
I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with my right hand of righteousness. Be not dismayed, somebody. Don't stop trusting God. Don't lose your faith in God. Because he will uphold you with his mighty hand of righteousness. I'm here to tell somebody, never fear. Never falter. Never faint. Because you are in the hands of God. Never fail. Never falter. Never faint. Because you are in the hand of God. Never fail. Never falter. Never faint. Because you are in the hand of God. Hallelujah. Don't grow weary in well-doing. I believe that somebody is under the press. But just humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Because there is no help outside of God. In him dwelleth the fullness. The Bible said in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And that is right and there are pleasures forevermore. When the hand of God is upon you, there is eternal bliss. And there is an eternal pleasure. You may not always be happy but you can always have joy put your hand upon me Lord put your hand upon me Lord put your hand upon me Lord and I wish that would be our prayer today put your hand upon me Lord but can I give out one more warning be careful be careful and I'm warning by internet and everywhere. Those who will seek to stretch forth their hands upon the saints of God. Don't touch the anointed of the Lord. Don't touch those who the hand of God is upon. And I'm issuing a warning. Because when Paul went to a particular place. And he witnessed to this official Sergius Paulus. There was this man called Elimas or Bar Jesus. And I'm warning those, don't try and bar Jesus. Don't try and bar Jesus. Because Paul, you see, Elimas recognized that if Paul told Sergius Paulus about Jesus, and Paulus believed in Jesus, then he would cut off Elimas. And his source of bread and water would be done. And many times when you get saved, people seek to stop you to cut you off because guess what they recognize that they will lose control over you if jesus has control over you and if you're in the hand of jesus then satan have to let you go and every stronghold have to let you go and every chain shall be broken and they don't want to let you go richard they don't want to let you go and that's why they're gonna fight to hold on to you but hold on to jesus I'd warn those who would seek to try and bar Jesus. And so because this man tried to stop the apostle who the hands of God was upon. And let me tell you the hands of God was upon Paul. Because the scripture says in Acts 13 in Antioch where the, the worldwide evangelism began. You see this thing about going to Kenya. It didn't start here. It started in Acts 13 when God said separate me Paul and Barnabas for the work which they have called me. And the Bible said the hands of God was upon them. And because the hands of God was upon them people were being saved in the hundreds and the thousands because the hand of God is upon them. If we want to take Kenya by storm we just need the hand of God upon us and we'll take the world by storm and this man was going and there are some bar Jesuses that we're going to face in Kenya. And we're going to face some bar Jesuses in, in, in Tanzania. And we're going to face some bar Jesuses in Uganda. But guess what? You're going to face bar Jesus in Jamaica. You're going to face bar Jesus at Mandela Park. And you're going to face bar Jesus at Emancipation Park. And you're going to face bar Jesus at George William Grand Park. And you'll face bar Jesus at your workplace. And you'll face bar Jesus in your community. And you'll face bar Jesus at your home. And you'll even face bar 
Lord Jesus, God forbid, in church. But if the hand of God is upon you, you don't need to fear any sorcerer. You don't need to fear any wizard. You don't need to fear any worker of iniquity. You don't need to go to any Uber man. But you just need to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And so when Paul went forth and bar Jesus came up against him, and he must try to stop him. Paul said, look here, man. The hand of God is against you. Can I tell somebody, don't touch a child of God. Don't try to block the gospel. Don't try to stop this church. Because the hand of God will be against you. You might not understand what's happening in farm. You might not understand what has been happening for this last year. But be careful, lest you fight against the hand of God. And if you be found fighting against God, and the hand of God is against you, then my God, I can't help you. So watch it. Watch it. Watch it. I feel Jesus in this place. I feel, I rebuke the spirit of bar Jesus in the name of Jesus. Because we are going bold in Jesus' name. And tell me who can stand before us. So I give a warning to the prince of Kenya. And I give a warning to the prince of Tanzania. And I give a warning to the prince of Uganda. Guess what? The apostolics are coming to town. Fam is coming to town. Because we're going to have faith apostolic ministry, Kenya. And faith apostolic ministry, uh, Tanzania. And faith apostolic ministry, Uganda. And faith Bible college, Kenya. Can I get an amen? And so Paul said, look here, the hand of God, which is upon me, is against you. The same hand that was upon the Israelites was against the Egyptians. And because the hand of God was upon Elimas, the Bible said that he was blinded. And this man who thought he was the big man was now seeking people to take him around. I'm here to tell somebody, watch it! Don't come up against. Don't hinder. Don't interfere with the work of God. Who can stand before us when we go in Jesus' name? I didn't plan to come along this line, but that's how the spirit lead it. But I'm here to tell somebody that the hand of God can be upon you today for good. You can come to God today and accept his hand of mercy, or you will have to deal with his hand of wrath. The same hand that carried them through the Red Sea is the same hand that caused the Red Sea to be closed upon the Egyptians. The same hand that gave them bread from heaven is the same hand that caused, hallelujah, uh, locusts to come upon the Egyptian. The same hand that caused water to gush from the rock is the same hand that caused the waters in Egypt to turn to blood. The same hand that gave them meat when there was no meat is the same hand that caused darkness upon the land and caused all the Egyptians to lose their firstborn. I'm here to tell somebody, ah, don't get frustrated with the process but just commit yourself to God humble yourself under the mighty hand of God ah, we need to learn to recognize the hand of God in our lives and there are only three ways you're going to recognize the hand of God because you, if you want to recognize how God work, firstly you must commit to this, you must study this this will tell you who God is this will tell you ah, what God requires of you, this will tell you how to be saved, this will tell you that you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins and you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. In this, there are about six to eight occurrences where men were baptized in Jesus' name and they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. In this, we have nobody been baptized in the titles Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. This will tell you that there is one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. And it will tell you that He is God and there is none beside Him. The omniscient God knows no other. This will tell you that Jesus is God, for great is the mystery of Godliness, and God was manifested in the flesh. This will tell you that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word God and the word became flesh and so the very hands that work miracles on the earth the hands that open blind eyes is the hands that are upon me so I don't need to worry when I can't see my way. The hands that heal the lame are the hands that are upon me so even when I can't walk he will carry me. Hallelujah the hands that open the dumb mouth. Hallelujah and cause the, the, the dumb to speak 
It's the same hands that are upon me and he will put words in my mouth so I don't have to think about what I need to say. I just need to trust him and humble myself under the mighty hand of God. Put your hand on my head, Lord, I don't mind. Put your hand on my chest, Lord, I don't mind. Put your hand on my back, Lord. I want his hand all over me. Just cover me, Jesus. Grip me with your hand. Cover me with your fingers. Cover me with your mighty fingers. Surround me, Lord. Edge me around on every part. But cover me with your hand. I feel Jesus in this place. I feel the hand of God in this place. Hallelujah. I don't need to worry. And you don't need to fear when the hand of God is upon you. Is there anybody today? You're living an existence and you're unsure. You're unsure. Because the hand of God was upon Paul, even in persecution. Paul said, I've been beaten. I've been killed and God raised me. I've been hungry. I've done so many things. And at Jerusalem, it's just chains waiting for me. But guess what? Because God's hand is upon me, none of these things move me. I don't know what awaits in Kenya, but none of these things move me. Once the hand of God is upon me, let me tell you something. Sometime the hand of God, the Bible said the hand of God was upon Ezekiel. And the hand of God led him to the valley of dry bones. And sometimes we don't understand. How can the hand of God be upon you and he takes you to a valley of dry bone but if God takes you to a valley of dry bone it means that these dry bones can walk it means that sinews can come upon bone and flesh can come upon bone and life can return there are some dry bones in Kenya but can these dry bones live oh son of man can these dry bones live I want some people to get up and to start to prophesy hey Kodomo we prophesy this morning uh, as we sang but begin to prophesy to Kenya and begin to prophesy to Tanzania and begin to prophesy come on I'm serious stand up stand up everywhere there are dry bones downtown dry bones in New Kingston dry bones in Alpha Tree but son of man can these dry bones live son of man can these dry bones live Come on, lift your hands in faith and in your mind project yourself to Kenya and project yourself to Sir uh, William Grant Park and begin to prophesy to these bed modes because I see men, women and children receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I see that man in stammering lips and he's at the verge of breakthrough and I see Pastor Wong saying receive the Holy Ghost in Jesus name. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, breathe somebody. Breathe hallelujah breathe the spirit of God Jesus breathe and he said receive you the Holy Ghost come on hallelujah prophesy to the dry bones breathe life speak life speak deliverance speak salvation speak healing I'm speaking to some sick bodies right now in the name of Jesus and I'm I'm I'm, I'm prophesying healing I'm commanding healing your dry body shall live your dry bones shall live that ache can take shall go I rebuke the sickness in the name of Jesus that has taken up sister Kimon Allen and if there be anybody here who is sick in the name of Jesus I prophesy in your life touch them Jesus let your hand be upon them Jesus let your hand be upon them for good and prosper them and prosper them and prosper them God is going to turn the heart of the king God is going to turn the heart of the prime minister God is going to turn the heart of your adversary he's going to turn the heart of your landlord he's going to turn the heart of your supervisor he's going to turn the heart of your manager and God is going to give you favor because the hand of God upon you represents divine favor in your life I feel Jesus in this place the hand of the Lord is upon you Lord put your hand upon me Let's begin to worship him everywhere. If you are here, if you need the Holy Ghost, if you need the hand of God upon you, let me tell you, it's the same hand brought salvation. God said, with my hand and with my arm, I brought thee salvation. You know why Jesus is set on the right hand of God? Because Jesus is the hand of God manifested to man. God is a spirit and he doesn't have a physical hand. But when he created a physical body that represents, hallelujah, his personal touch and involvement. So Jesus is the hand of God that brought salvation. And you can access that salvation. 
When the hand of God is upon you, God is personally involved in your life. He cares about your fears. He cares about what you eat in the morning. He cares about the route that you take to work. He cares about the clothes that you wear. He cares about your state and the job. God cares and he wants to be personally involved in your life. Hand of God. Oh, somebody come. Oh, can you get the hand of God upon you? Well, you know, if you're disobedient, the hand of God will destroy you. But if you're obedient, the hand of God can be upon you for good. And all it says, all this book says, this book puts it simple. It says you need to be born again. You need to be born of the water and of the spirit. So this book says, Peter told him on the day of Pentecost, when they asked, men and brethren, what shall we do? They said, if you want the hand of God upon you, repent. Be sorry for your sins. Require a turn of life that you want the hand of God to be upon you. The devil's meddling hands has been in your business for too long. But you can have the power of God to rebuke the enemy. And so repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's how you get the hand of God in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come. I'm making the call one more, two more times. Three times as a matter of fact. God's number of divinity. Is there anybody here who needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost? If you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, come to these altars now. Is there anybody here who wants to surrender their lives to God. If you want the hand of God to be upon your life from this day forth and forevermore, come to these altars now. Is there anybody here who wants to be baptized in Jesus' name? I invite you to come. And I'm going to do this. If you are here and you desire today to be baptized in the pool right there, in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins, can you just push your hand high? Let me see. It. If you want to be baptized today in the name of Jesus, I have one young lady putting her hand up. Come. Are you baptized, sir? Come. Come up. We we'll learn. Is there anybody else who wants to be baptized in the name of Jesus today? You want to invite the hand of God on your life? Put your hand up. Let me see you. Anybody? Who wants to be baptized in Jesus' name today? Well, we thank God for this young lady. We thank God. You can go back to the altar and pray and receive the Holy Ghost. And please note, Sister Monique, whoever, note her. She's going to be baptized today. Hallelujah. The hand of God is in this place and some people are going to get the Holy Ghost right now. Do you believe that? If you believe that, lift your hands to Jesus and let's begin to worship him. Come on, close your eyes everywhere. I don't want anybody to look around. I just want you to begin to worship. I want you to begin to worship. We want to block this place with the worship and the praise that belongs to God. We want the mighty hand of God to come down in this place. We want God to move by his spirit. Come on, worship him. Worship him. Every man, woman, and child, lift your hands. And let's begin to worship. Let's begin to call upon the name of Jesus. Everywhere, let's begin to worship. Let's begin to worship. Let's begin to worship. Hallelujah. I feel that there is a veil that we must press through by our worship and our praise. I need somebody to be obedient right now. Apostolics, turn your eyes upon Jesus and begin to worship him. Turn your eyes upon Jesus and begin to worship him. Turn your eyes upon Jesus and begin to worship him. Your faces are engraved in his hand. Your name is engraved in his hand. Your name is engraved right beside the nails that pierce his hand. Begin to worship. Begin to worship. Hallelujah. Pastor one, can you pray? Holy Father, we pray, O oh God, that we have heard your words. You have spoken to us in no uncertain term, Lord Jesus. 
God, now that your word has gone forth, Lord, it is our responsibility, O oh God, to react. God, I grant it, Lord Jesus, that those that are here, O oh God, that they may submit to your words, Lord, that your servant have spoken here today. I pray, O oh God, that they may give, Lord Jesus, conviction of heart, Lord Jesus, contriteness of spirit, Lord Jesus, and on a broken heart. And so that they may seek you now, Lord Jesus, those that are on the altar here, O oh God. As they seek after you, O oh God, we pray, O oh God, that their heart continually be convicted, Lord Jesus. That they may receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, Lord, we pray. We pray for the one that have responded, Lord, for baptism. That if she have not yet received your spirit, Lord, that she too may receive of your spirit. God, come for the heart of your people. Strengthen them again, Lord Jesus, as your word have said and gone forth, Lord Jesus. Renew us, Lord Jesus, we pray, O oh God. Refresh us again. We give you thanks once more, Lord Jesus. Bless your name, Lord Jesus. We lift you up, O oh God. We magnify you, Lord. We pray for those that would minister right now in song, Lord, that you anoint them. Anoint the banners it play, Lord that all may do so underneath the function of the Holy Ghost, Lord, we pray. Have it your way, we ask. These are more in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
By way of announcement, by way of announcement, all present, all existing junior crime members, Sister Margaret Boucher would have to meet you over by number three just now. All present, all existing junior crime members, very quickly, please meet Sister Margaret Boucher by number three just now. A gratis was also left on a Waltham taxi by one of our members, one of our visitors. The gratis this year, you can come and claim it in Jesus' name. Praise God. This is my desire to hold. 